welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, we are actually going to be doing a reading vlog. I am going to be reading a book from one of my favorite times, and you already know what it is. It's the Harlem Renaissance. Also, I'm going to be reading one of my favorite authors doing the Harlem Renaissance, my favorite uh, my favorite female author doing the Harlem Renaissance, and that is Jesse Redmond Fawcett. Now, the book that I'm going to be reading by her, I think no one really knows and really talks about i was looking on audible to see if they had it on you know audio um just to see and they did it they had plum bun which she's known for and then they had this is confusion which is her debut novel but they did not have her third novel on there nor did they have her fourth novel but her third novel is the china berry tree a novel of american life and this is it's gonna be a ride so um it's set in so this actually was published in 1928, I believe. I have to check, but it's set in the 1900s. It's set in, in Jersey. And you have a young woman named Laurentine. And Laurentine, she was um, born with bad blood. And the, blood. and the bad blood is her mother is black and her dad is white. But the way her parents got together was, was a scandal. Her mom was a young maid and her dad was actually married and they had an affair and the product of that affair was Florentine. And because of that, you know, her family was ostracized, her and her mother, they didn't want to talk to him or anything like that. Um, he ends up dying and he leaves him in a state. Then in comes the character, Melissa. Melissa is Laurentine's cousin. She is about seven, 17 years old. Um, before she was born, her mother, Judy, lived with Laurentine and Sarah, which is uh, Laurentine's mother, for a little bit. And then she just abruptly left, got married, had Melissa. And Melissa comes to live with them. That's the only part I know right now because I'm literally on the, like, the early chapters. Now, just by reading a little bit of the synopsis, it says adultery incest and question of racial identity beneath the surface of suburban life in this novel set in a small new jersey town in the early 1900s lonely young laurentine is obsessed with her bad blood inherited from a common law union then it says confident cousin melissa also aspires to marry well but a family secret shadows melissa's dreams and ambitions as she approaches an explosive revelation that already sounds juicy, okay? And a lot of people, when you think of the Harlem Renaissance, you think of Langston Hughes and um, Zerna Hurston. But if it wasn't for Jesse Redmond Fawcett, we wouldn't know a lot of the authors like Langston Hughes. She is the one that actually published his writings in The Crisis um, that was a literary magazine. And because of that and because of her, we were introduced, you know, to him. A lot of the other, you know, authors and poets from, you know, the Harlem Renaissance, like Wallace Thurman, Nella Larson, um, Zora Neale Hurston, uh, Richard Bruce Nugent, it was because of her that they were able to get published because she had their work, she edited them, and then she put them out. And she doesn't get a lot of praise and recognition, you know what I mean? And this lady wrote four books and just amazing. This story already juicy. I mean, first of all, the the synopsis i mean adultery incest it's already juicy you want to know what's going to happen and she keeps you on your toes oh yeah that is what we are going to be reading and i'm gonna get ready to go to work I want us to be. I mean, this is ridiculous how, like, I'm literally looking at the covers because I want it to match, like, perfectly. I have gotten myself in a situation where it's like, girl, I sometimes can't even enjoy the book. I'm going to use this. I think these two, that's green. Because doesn't it match with that? Oh, but that's like an olive green, too. Okay, girl, now, come on. No, this is getting crazy. 
This is actually low key kind of relaxing. That's like a green one too. This is how it's looking pretty. So it goes with the book, Lord. Um, I don't care about like the, what do you call it? The highlighters being like the same color as like the cover of the book. No, I'm not, I haven't got that particular. Um, even though this is a used copy that I got, I bought it from Amazon. And the person that was like annotating it, which she only annotated it, it looks like a couple of pages. And when I say a couple, like five or so, but some of the highlighters that she, but some of the pages that she did annotate, like the highlighters, like this, no ma'am. That's a no ma'am for me. I don't like those highlighters. So here's the ones that I did today, obviously. And it's like, you know, the these are the highlighters that I use from Amazon. Um, I think all these tabs and highlighters and pins, they're in my uh, store from Amazon storefront if you want to check it out. That's always like down below. But yeah. Y'all know every time I start a book, I have, I check, I do the bookmark and the tabs, which lately I haven't been doing a bookmark, but I need to. So let's go to this. Also, the bookmark doesn't have to match like the cover. <laughs> it's just what I feel. And you already know I make mine. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do my Anita Baker um rapture album cover bookmark so melissa went um she was skating with uh, ashar ashar but while she was skating girl they had the people gossiping you know amongst each other there she is that's her that's judy strange's girl calls herself melissa paul wonder how much she know nothing why should she There's something that's funny about this strange blood child i mean wouldn't want her around my husband young as she is ain't much younger her mammy was before her oh go long miss tracy you ain't putting words in somebody's mouth well i only repeat what everybody says well you looking all at that girl <laughs> that gossip and you know what i'm starting a little bit a tiny 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 bit starting not to like um what's her name lauren uh laurentine <sighs> girl what's frustrating me is you know your situation is already dubious clearly they always talking about you got bad but a uh, bad blood i mean you know your mama slept with a married man you was a product of it and you have a colored doctor that is established and all that that is willing to be with you and look through i mean he don't even care about that and there's no prospects you haven't you've been there you ain't been nowhere else except jersey like girl make it make sense baby you know what i mean and it's like girl so that part is she she bothered me with that because my thing is you holding out trying to hold out he gonna get somebody else and after that you gonna be all ticked off and oh i had almost had him and all that girl no you gotta make a move okay um and i mean yeah oh yeah see that's perfect he matches with the lord Something's clearly wrong with me. And you know what? Because the back of the book, it says, um, Melissa also aspires to marry up, but a family secret shadows Melissa's dreams and ambitions. I think that that mama Judy of hers, I think she got either somebody raped her and obviously Melissa was a product and she hasn't told nobody or maybe she got in cahoots with somebody that she wasn't supposed to maybe like she did maybe if she did like her sister which I don't think so I think something happened and she yeah I think yeah, it sounds horrible. I really do think she maybe got raped and didn't tell nobody. Clearly, Melissa doesn't know anything because she didn't know her dad. The thing that she knows about her dad is what her mom told her. Um, so, yeah. And then, you know, the way that Judy slipped out of Jersey is like, come on, girl. You, clearly, we know you hiding something, but what are you hiding? That is 
that's the question melissa she got like two boys fighting over her right she likes um is it asher she likes asher but he's like training to be a farmer and then you have this boy named harry who she like don't really like him but kind of tolerate him but it looks like he like her more but they were skating right he be coming for her low-key okay and she's aware of it but it looked like he was drunk and he asked her to skate with him and she's like yeah no so he got all upset and obviously asher he came down he was like i want you to keep away from melissa got me she's my girl and i'm not going to have her bothered you you heard me he thought he heard Harry say, your girl, anybody's girl. What was that? Asked Asher, his voice suddenly dangerously calm. Oh, nothing. Now, now, boys, don't start nothing. Too many white folks here for that. We don't want this kind of thing to close to, we don't want this kind of thing close to us. So, like, them little slick jabs, like, when he said, um, he heard, when he said he thought he heard Harry say, your girl, uh, anybody's girl. Uh, one scene it was Alyssa nodded all right Asher see you in school tomorrow but she was strangely nervous within as she turned back to the warm seating room Harry rose glaring at her you know I asked you first Melissa he was talking about asking her to go to the carnival I know you did Harry but last week I didn't think I wanted to go but when you change your mind you could have sent for me her temper flared. My father were living, you wouldn't dare talk that way to me, Harry. If your father were living, you wouldn't be here. His whole being seemed sudden with evil. Look out, you might have to come to me after all, my girl. I don't know what you're talking about, she told him, but I know I do want you to go home. He slipped out the door. She waited until he heard the throbbing. Okay, yeah. But yeah, as you can see, like, what did he mean? when he was like look out you might have to come to me after all and if your father were living you wouldn't be here girl there's a there there i think he knows some stuff that she don't know mean like i was telling you earlier i think that maybe melissa was conceived by rape i don't know and clearly he knows some stuff um and then obviously with the gossip you know that the uh, other ladies were talking about yeah it, it looked like she might have been touched um, but girl, the tea, okay. Looking at my calendar, um, this is the one I showed you guys this before. The let me get this little thing tap. Um, this is the Lanice Howard. Hopefully, you know, I'm gonna look this up and see if she has like another um one for next year. I got this from Barnes and Noble, but I absolutely love the art. This one was for uh October. You remember got you remember I told you guys I'm actually going to like when this is when I'm done with this calendar, like when you know I'm when the year's over, I'm going to actually photocopy this and I'm going to put it on I'm gonna find a space on one of these walls um because this is just too pretty i love this so that was october so we are on in november now so let's see oh, isn't that pretty oh my gosh this is so pretty this is called you and me us never part up of course um and so they heal like the leaves of a bamboo tree and shine like the ambers of flame burning brightly pretty always like i don't know what the next month is gonna look like because i want to be surprised but this is basically almost over we have one more month but yeah i'm gonna look and see that is so pretty also too i was looking to see if they had um at the dollar store like another one of these i got this from dollar tree and I only want to, I need to go to another location just to see, haul this for my birthday. And I just love it. And it fits perfectly in here because it's small. Also too, it's gold. And y'all know that is the theme in this room, pink and gold. So I'm just going to chill out for the rest of the day. It's almost what, four o'clock. I just made some salmon. Um, It's in the oven now. And yeah. I do need to make some more um, bookmarks. I have some Etsy orders to fulfill so I can do that later on, but 
yeah i'm just gonna chill she gave us the true like tea towards the end of the book because i can't oh my gosh this is some tea y'all i yeah so you guys i finished this book last night and just fantastic jesse Ritman fawcett like i told you guys is like one of my favorite authors from the harlem renaissance one of my favorite women authors and this was just amazing i would say though um this is my second novel by her i do like plum bun better um uh, but this one was still just as amazing I I think they're also the reason why I like her writings is you get like a fairy tale type of ending, but it's still like realistic. And this, you know, had that same aspect. One thing I would say though, she like wait, she made you wait for the big reveal like way towards the end. And some parts it was kind of like, okay, can you kind of hurry up a little bit? Because you already have an inkling like I know what's going on, but you just want it to be confirmed. But that confirmation came um, maybe about five, six pages before the end. But the way she did it was perfect. It was just perfect. Her writing so seamless. Also, it's so um, visual. You literally can see yourself in the 1900s, you know, in Philadelphia and in Jersey, you know, walking and talking with these characters. Just amazing. I now understand. You remember I was telling you guys how I wasn't feeling... Um, Laurentine, I understand her now. You know what I mean? The fact that you were ostracized by a whole town and you don't have any, you know, you don't have, you, you didn't play a part in it. You know, you're just a product of an affair that clearly was not, you know, <laughs> right. But I mean, she can't help that, you know, and she had always been just so like I said, ostracized, which it made her become lonely. It made her become kind of stand offish. She always had her guard up. But, I, you know, after really going through and thinking, I was like, I probably would be the same way. You know what I mean? Because you don't know where people are coming from. And even when people would be kind, kind of nice to her, she's kind of like, you know, why? What, you know, what are your true intentions? And they will always, everyone in the whole town, oh, you hear about them strange girls, you know. And the fact, I love also, too, the play on their last name. It's just like the beauty of a great writer. So, yeah, guys, I actually would recommend this. Um, you know, like I stated before, a lot of the Harlem Renaissance literature, they read so modern. One reason why I probably do enjoy it also. But she is a win in my book. I have two more books to read by her. I started um, There's Confusion. And then I have, um, is it Comedy? Comedy in America? I think Comedy in American something i'll put up on the screen um i actually if you guys remember i was supposed to read this uh for my tbr for next year for like my harlem renaissance section but i couldn't hold out um i wanted to read something um uh, from the harlem renaissance this is actually my first my first novel this year from the harlem renaissance i've been reading some short stories some some critical analysis but y'all know that's i absolutely adore that you know time in our um history so i just you know I wanted to read, go back and read something, uh, like a whole novel from that time, and it did not disappoint. So, yeah, guys, that's all I have for you, and I'll be back with more of my books. Bye.